In 1909, Mark Twain was living at the summit of American letters. He was loved both for his humor and his biting satires of corruption and inhumanity. But back in 1865, when his work first appeared in the Post, he was just an aspiring journalist in California. So obscure that the Post originally gave his name as Mark Train. This was four years before he wrote of his tour of Europe and the Holy Land in The Innocents Abroad. For years, excerpts from that book appeared in the Post. Twain was far from being the only humorist of his time. The Post also published Artemis Ward, John Phoenix, Josh Billings, and others. But Twain appeared more often than any of them. There was something unique about his humor. It was more imaginative, more unexpected, and, well, funnier. Americans still find him funny. In those early days of his career, though, he sometimes pushed the limits. Some of his pieces strayed into the crude, the grotesque, or shocking. For example, in the story Aurelia's Unfortunate Young Man, which appeared in the June 1, 1867 Post, he tells of a woman's fiancé, who was gradually diminished by losing pieces of himself in accidents. Or, in his lecture on the Hawaiian Islands, he offered to show the audience how cannibals ate their food. He asked if some nice lady would only hand him a baby. The lecture proceeded without illustration. Some of this early humor relied on ethnic jokes, making fun of Irishmen and Native Americans. But his moral outrage began to emerge in his writing, like this piece from our January 15, 1870 issue. It tells how white settlers, through their efforts at civilizing the Hawaiians, had killed off 80% of the native population. When settlers first arrived, he wrote, the Hawaiians were very short of diseases. They hadn't enough to go around, but they're all right now. We've supplied all their necessities. They nearly all have the consumption and are about retiring from business. In his later years, Twain regularly mixed the critical and the comical. Humor, he said, shouldn't profess to teach or preach, but it must do both if it would live forever. I have always preached, he added. If the humor came out of its own accord and uninvited, I've allowed it a place in my sermon but I was not writing the sermon for the sake of the humor. This video is brought to you by the Saturday Evening Post Digital Archives. Saturday Evening Post members can explore our 200-year-old archive and receive six issues of the Post Print Edition for only $15 a year.